Oh, <laughs> uh, we're not addressing the secretary anymore. You're terrible. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so the first one is the first one. No! I thought that would happen when I start writing my book. You know this emotional turmoil that writers have all the time? Ilham <laughs> Yok. No muse. This never happened to me. So I thought I lacked the skills to be a good writer. But then I realized that there were other essential skills to be a good writer, such as consistency, discipline, motivation, which all of us lack every now and then. For me, instead of this, no, no, it doesn't work with my whisk and series, it was more or less like this. Coming home, laptop, shall I continue writing my book? Nah, I'll watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> so it, instead of being able to write a book in six months, I wrote it in one and a half years. Actually, five years ago, when I was in a bus, I came from Rhodes that time as well, I had an idea of a topic for a possible novel. I'll tell you very shortly. Story of John and Nora. The names always change, actually. It starts at a hospital setting. John and Nora. They're waiting outside the doctor's office. They enter, and the doctor says, Laura, you have a brain tumor. You only have three months to live. But John loves Laura so much, he cannot stand the idea of her passing away so soon. So he insists, Laura, go get treatments. I don't want you to die. But Laura, rather than having a treatment and wasting her next three months, she wants to live her three months to the fullest and then pass away. And then after all these arguments, John is angry. He grabs the car. He drives fastly. He makes an accident. Wakes up in the hospital. Loses his memory. <laughs> Typical Turkish mood. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, no, no. <laughs> and then... He remembers about an illness, but he loves his wife so much, he doesn't associate the illness with his wife. So he believes that he's ill and he's going to die in three months. That's the only thing that he can remember. And Laura plays along with him because uh, Laura wants, him to, wants them to live there the rest of their three months to the fullest instead of worrying about the possible cure, which has only 1% of survival. To be continued. <laughs> but I only wrote five pages of this, but I want to write that. Anyways. The book I wrote, though, was another story. It was about my story as an entrepreneur. Most of you know I have been working in the entrepreneurship field for the last two years. And it has been full of ups and downs. Maybe not as tragic as John and Laura's story, but I lost money, I had bad times, I had bad emotional moments, but I had a lot of experience. And I said, why not write this in a book? It wasn't John's story, but it's my, it was my story. It was difficult at times, but many people helped me. I had an editor. And Marcel, she helped me for a while. She told me, send me five pages every Friday. And that really fastened me up three months because I gave a break for four or five, four or five months. But at the end, I had my baby. I was imagining John and Laura would, buy, would be my first story. But the first story that I, that I wrote on my book was my own story. And finally, it was my aim. I had two aims, before 25 to speak five languages, well I don't speak five languages, I speak four but two of them on a mediocre level, but my second aim was to write a book before 30 years old. Only my dear and I try to And it has been a journey full of ups and downs, and in Turkey actually, I mean, this book Obviously, it's associated to my work. It tells my story. There are other stories of other entrepreneurs as well. Uh, publishing a book is nice, not because you will get rich by a book, because only five people in Turkey are rich by their books, and it's their full-time job. But it's good because it's good reference for business. You can show up with the book. In Turkey, when you say, when you say, well, that's my main. In Turkey, when you say I wrote a book, people really think that you are the. Jesus. Expert of that area. <laughs> <laughs> but the book is about me losing more than 100,000 lira, so <laughs> I'm not the expert in entrepreneurship. 
But for me, I think the most valuable thing had been uh, the memory that it brings. Because, I mean, well, one thing is certain in life, we are all going to die. <laughs> Such a such a colorful Bye. speech. <laughs> yeah, <fun. laughs> but I think what matters is to leave that things that you leave behind. I mean, this book is no great legacy. Maybe millions of people won't read it, but it is something. And I think that's what matters at the very end: to have fun, to enjoy your life to the fullest, and leave some things that will be valuable for other people as well. As Tony Robbins says, a very famous trainer says, when you focus on two things, self-development continuously and leaving a mark or contributing without expecting anything in return, as Vlada said, then you'll be truly happy. And this book it might be just a combination of 150 pages. I'm sure many of you wrote more pages than this. But this has been on my second life goal. It, it is something that I wanted to contribute without expecting anything in return. And it will be a good memory for the rest of my life and after that as well. And I would really like to thank people, also use this opportunity to thank people who have supported this book on Toastmasters as well, both financially and emotionally as well. Thank you very much.